Hi, my name is Jake, and I am a bookish drummer. Welcome back to my channel. And for this video, I have yet another Stephen King book review for y'all. Every month, my patrons on Patreon get to vote for which Stephen King book they want me to read and review for the channel every month. And the winner for July was Josephina, and she wanted me to read and review Mr. Mercedes, the very first book in the Bill Hodges trilogy. And like with most of my Stephen King book reviews, Mr. Mercedes was a reread for me. I hadn't read it in a long time. And in fact, I haven't read the whole trilogy in a long time. And the first book being, of course, Mr. Mercedes, the second book being Finders Keepers, and the third and final book being End of Watch. So of course, for this review, I will be expounding mostly on the first book, Mr. Mercedes, but I also want to touch on my experience with the second and the third book, Finders Keepers being book two and End of Watch being book three. And of course, like with most of my Stephen King book reviews, it's a reread for me. It's the second time I've read this and I haven't read it in quite a long time. I may go back and reread book two because I actually think it's the best book in the trilogy. I'll probably skip book three though because honestly I'm not a huge fan of it and I'll get into why I'm not a huge fan of it towards the end of the video. But for now, let's just jump right into talking about Mr. Mercedes. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into it. So quick overview of the series and my experience with it. When I read the first book, I enjoyed it, but I didn't love it. I think I gave it around three and a half stars, maybe three stars the first time I read it. And then I jumped into book two, Finders Keepers, and I thought it was amazing. Four and a half, five star book, just really good and just, oh, it was so good. And then I was pretty severely disappointed by book three. I believe I gave it two, maybe two and a half stars. I really didn't like it that much. But uh, let's talk about my experience rereading the first book. I pretty much thought the, the exact same thing reading this, this first book. I liked it. I thought it was pretty good. I didn't love it by any means, but I'm glad that I reread it because I did enjoy it. So for those of you who don't know what the premise is, or maybe you've never even heard of this from Stephen King, I'll give a brief uh, premise synopsis for what the book is about. So it starts out with the prologue and you've got hundreds of people standing in line at a job fair just looking for a job and all of a sudden you get this maniac in a Mercedes who runs over like a bunch of people, injures a lot of people, kills a bunch of people, and that's the prologue. And then after the prologue you jump into the perspective of Bill Hodges who is a retired police officer, detective, and his one regret in life is not catching the Mr. Mercedes killer. And he's been retired for a few months now and he's kind of regretting not working and he's just being really lazy and he's often thinks about committing suicide just because like of all the stuff he's seen and just how useless he feels now that he's not working and then all of a sudden he gets a letter in the mail and it's from the mercedes killer and he's basically saying like you'll never catch me and you should go ahead and just kill yourself but instead of, you know, killing himself, Bill Hodges uses that as fuel to try and catch the Mr. Mercedes killer. And that's essentially what the first book is about. So like I said, this book is pretty good. I would give it about three and a half stars. I think the best thing about this book is the plot and the pacing. Like it's really good. It's really fast paced. The plot is very interesting. Just following this cop trying to catch this Mr. Mercedes killer. And the cool thing about it is you get perspective from both Bill Hodges trying to catch him and the actual Mercedes killer. And you get kind of his weird perspective and he's got like a fucked up life. And it's, it's, it's pretty interesting. I will say the major downside with this is that even though it has a terrific plot and it has terrific pacing, the one thing that it lacks for me is great characters and great character development. I would say probably my favorite character to read about in here is the villain, the Mercedes Killer. He's got a very just interesting 
backstory and just his thought processes are really interesting to read about. The actual main character, Bill Hodges, is kind of like a, he reads like a very typical detective person. Like he's very disgruntled by everything. And he's just like, it's all about the job for him. And he's just, he, he just reads like a very typical police officer slash detective character. He's not very interesting to me. And the other characters that are introduced in here, I'm also not a huge fan of. One of my least favorite characters that King has ever written is probably Jerome. He's not, he's not terrible by any means, but there's one thing that King does for him as kind of like a character quirk that just doesn't work for me. I think it's pretty dumb and it really, it's just so awkward. I don't want to get into it, but if you've read the book, you probably know what I'm talking about. I didn't like that. And just overall, his character is not very interesting. The, the character of Holly, I will admit, has grown on me a little bit. The first time I read this trilogy, I wasn't too impressed by her, but reading books that include her in other books, like she's, after this trilogy, she's introduced in other books and... She, I do like her character more after that. In this first book, she rarely gets any screen time. But I did enjoy her character a little bit more. And then there's characters that I just completely forgot about. Like, there's one character that, like, is introduced as sort of, like, uh, a secondary character. And she's pretty important to the plot. I had completely forgotten about her, to be honest. I had no idea. I had no recollection that she was a character. So that just shows you how forgettable some of these characters are. And normally for Stephen King, like the one thing going into the book, like you know there's going to be great character work. Even if the story is slow and boring, like you know the characters are at least going to be on point. But for this one, it's the exact opposite. Like the plot is really good, the pacing's really good, the action and the, and the suspense is really good. But then the characters, a lot of them fall flat or they're just not interesting or they're unoriginal. So... It's, it's not the best, but it's also not bad. I would recommend it to someone who is more of a plot reader and less of a character reader. But uh, yeah, for me, it doesn't work all the time. But like I said, it, it's still pretty good. I would give it three and a half stars for that. So that's kind of my take on the first book, Mr. Mercedes. And now if we're going to dive a little bit deeper into the trilogy as a whole, I would say that the best book in the trilogy by far is, oh, let me find the right book here, is Finders Keepers. Now, this book is very interesting because while it is really good, it's not good because of the characters or anything really to do with Mr. Mercedes. Like, if you read the first, I don't know, 150 pages of this book, you're wondering, like, how even is this connected to the first book? Because none of the characters from the first book are in, like, the, the first chunk of this book. And really, this book should have just been a standalone because the story in and of itself is really good and really thrilling and just, it's so good. And I really actually want to reread this book soon. Not because of the first book, but because just as, as a standalone, it's really good. It does connect back to Mr. Mercedes, but like I said, honestly, it should have just been a standalone and this should have just been a standalone. Like, these could have just been two separate things. Like, this could have been a standalone. It would have been pretty good. Not the best, but it would have been decent. And then this, as a standalone, would have been, like, just amazing. But like I said, it does connect back to it. And then, of course, we get the dreaded third book, uh, which is End of Watch, which I really didn't like. And he does... <sighs> this is a really big pet peeve of mine when Stephen King does this. He takes a book that otherwise is relatively realistic and you don't really have to suspend your disbelief at all. And then all of a sudden he shoehorns in, like he just jams in a random supernatural element. And you're just like, why? Why? The story was already good and then you made it weird. He did this with several books. He did this with Lisey's story, which I really didn't like. He did it with uh, Rose Matter, which I know people like but I love the first half of that book but then when he introduces like the really weird element you're just like why like this book was already really good and then it got weird and you'd ruined it he did the same thing with this book like not not look towards the end of the book just the whole book is like 
Why? <laughs> Why did you do this? And it's even more shitty because the first two books are very grounded in reality. Like this is just like a detective story. Like it's a thriller. It, it, everything that goes on in this book could have happened in real life. Same thing with this book, but then you get to the third book and it's just a really weird supernatural element and you're like, this doesn't fit with the other two books at all. And I, even though I hear that as a common complaint, if you go on Goodreads, this book is still rated really highly, which I'm very confused by. I would have thought I would have had a lower rating. But yeah, that's kind of my overall experience with the trilogy. The first book, I don't mind rereading. It's not a favorite of mine. It would never be in like my top 20 or 30 books, but it's still worth a read. It's pretty good. I especially like the villain. I like reading about him and the plot's really good. The second book is amazing. It's just, and, I, and I'm being very brief with it because I don't want to like spoil it. I think you should go into it not knowing what it, it's about because that's what I did. And it was really good because of that. And then the third book, I really, I mean, I might reread it just for completionist sake, but I really have no desire to go back and reread this crap. Maybe, no, I, I don't think I would like it. It's just, yeah, I don't think I'm gonna reread it. It's it's just it's just bad. I don't like it. Whew. Well, that's kind of my rambly thoughts on the uh, trilogy as a whole. That's kind of out of order there. That's my thoughts on the trilogy as a whole. And yeah, the first book, I I would say it's worth a read. Uh, you, if you go into it like as your first Stephen King book, just be aware that it's not a typical Stephen King book by any means. It's very plot focused. Very just like go, 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 and less about the character moments. There are some character moments, but that's not really what the focus of the book is. Whereas if you go back early on in his career, it's, it, they're, they're horror books, but at the same time, they are more on the literary side and they're about developing the characters and watching them grow and just change and just, it's really good. This one, just read it for the plot. That's, that's about what I can say for it. If you're a plot reader, definitely check it out. Uh, if you're a King fan, like a constant reader who's read a lot of his books and you haven't checked it out, I would say check it out. Just, you know, you know read all his books, right? But yeah, I, it's, I had a good time with it. Not one of my favorites, but uh, it landed at three and a half stars for me. All right. So that's my very rambly review on Mr. Mercedes and the Bill Hodges trilogy as a whole. What do you guys think of Mr. Mercedes? Do you like it? Do you love it? Did you think it was kind of meh? And what are your thoughts on the Bill Hodges trilogy? Have you read all of it? And if you have, kind of rank what your favorite and least favorite are. Like, do you love Finders Keepers like me? Or are you weird and love End of Watch? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Not really. <laughs> anyway, leave all those great comments down below. And of course, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my YouTube channel and the Bookish Drummer Discord. And if you'd like to further support me financially, go check out my Patreon page and see what that's all about. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching and have a terrific day.